Hey you, welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. I'm wife. And together we're reading the Bible. Starting with Genesis and eventually ending with Revelations, we're working through every book and offering our atheist two cents. Or shekels. Yeah, those. We're asking questions and pointing out all the nonsense. We aren't academics or scholars. Nope. In fact, when it comes to religion, we really don't know anything at all. What we've learned so far is that God's a dick. Oh, he really is, isn't he? If you're interested in how we reached this startling conclusion, maybe start from episode one. Otherwise, jump in anywhere. It's all good. Yep. Hey, wife, we just got a new sponsor. It's Anchor. They must think we're doing something right because they picked us back up. That's amazing. Want to hear something even more amazing? Uh, yeah. I actually know what they are. You are full of shit. I'm calling your bluff. Tell me about Anchor. Okay, so Anchor by Spotify is the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. I'm actually surprised you knew that. But did you also know that Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer? Yes, because I see you do that on your phone all the time and it looks pretty simple. It really is. And when hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. But I use CastBox. Yeah, darling. I know you like CastBox. It gets distributed there too and lots of other platforms as well. And how much are we paying for this awesome service? Absolutely nothing. Coolio. So then we should tell people to download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started? Yep. Do it now. Husband. Wife. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Uh, it's going. So, I know that we just did um, a surprise bonus episode on Easter. We did. We didn't even, like, announce that ahead of time. We're kind of really bad promoters and stuff, you know? But it was fun, though. It was. I kind of, like, got in past our last podcast and we're like, hey, Easter. Easter. That's a holiday, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We should probably do something. Yeah. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was fun. But, um... I'm pretty sure that because of that, you do not remember at all what happened um, during our actual last episode, do you? I don't know. It still feels like we're talking about shopping lists for the fucking arc and finishing all that shit up. Yeah. So, like, it feels like it never ends because they just go over the same goddamn thing, like, 500 times. So. Yeah. First they talked about it. Then they made the list for it. Then they built it. Then he gave them skills to build it. And then now they're decorating it and organizing it or something. And then some they, shit. like, relisted it again. Yeah. 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 So, um, oh, and then um, the people got frustrated because people were just donating too much. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I hate it when people donate too many things. You guys could never donate too much, just FYI. Oh, my God. (laughs) Seriously? That was not supposed to be a lead-in. I'm sorry. I just, I'm taking any opportunity, you know? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go with it. That's all you. That is not me. I know. That is not, I don't think that's okay. That donate button, it's in the link of all of our podcasts, so... Anyway, Mm -hmm. so today we are going to be reading Exodus chapters 37 and 38. All right. Uh, One more uh, housekeeping thing here because I didn't have a good intro into this one, but be sure to check out our new podcast. This is our podcast. Be sure to check out our new website that we have, sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where we are selling products that I have designed now. I'm doing the designs and, and we're selling... So that we can make money. Oh my god. So anyway, my favorite item that you listed there is the t-shirt that's got like staggering guy or it looks like a zombie or something. And then you wrote under it, why so, why drunk, so Noah? drunk, Noah? Yeah. That's and, my and favorite. And if you listen to our early episodes, that would make a lot of sense. So Because he was a drunk ass. He was. All right. We're going to get on with those uh, chapters that you just mentioned. Um, 37 and 38. Yeah, those ones. All yeah. right. Hey, wife. Yes, husband. Did you know that we are now on Patreon? Um, yes, because you told me, but also, no, tell me more. (laughs) So we're on Patreon now. Are we? We are. And our supporters can go there and support us. And we have multiple levels all the way up to You Killed God. 
That sounds really drastic and escalated quickly-ish. Well, no, there's multiple levels before there. So it, es it es escalates on a sliding scale of, you know, cheap to, to not cheap. Oh. But, you know, we can definitely use any amount. So, like, any support is always appreciated. So what exactly is patreon it's a place where you can show your support for our podcast and just our podcast any podcast or any <laughs> performer but you know we're the ones that you know you're listening to right now so maybe you should uh, you know support us that'd be awesome that would be awesome but we love you anyway so all you got to do is go to patreon look up sacrilegious discourse it's actually patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse is our actual main page there so head on over and uh, send us some love yeah Okay, so Exodus chapter 37, the furnishings of the tabernacle. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Bezalel made the ark of acacia wood, a secret chest, 45 inches long, 27 inches uh, wide. I know. It's <laughs> pain. Pain. My brain is in pain. And 27 inches high. He uh -huh. overlaid it inside and outside with pure gold. And he ran a molding of gold all around it because God's all about that gold, about that gold. <laughs> he cast four gold rings and attached them to its four feet, two rings on each side. Then he made poles from acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He inserted the poles into the rings at the side of the ark to carry it. No shit. Really? Yeah, that's I what he did. I would have never fucking guessed that. That's what those carrying poles were for. Huh. They were for carrying. I mean, I didn't get it the first 25 times. Right. But I, I think I might have I'm it this time. I'm sure that they'll say it again, just in case you I didn't. Mean... <laughs> like, they make the people sound really simple. You know? Yeah, you gotta tell them, like, you know... Um, but, times. but you only have to tell them once to go stab each other. Right. That worked pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. We only got to cover that one once. Then he made the Ark's cover, the place of atonement from pure gold. Uh, gold. Hmm. Shocked. It was 45 inches long and 27 inches wide. He made two cherubim from hammered uh, ha from gold. Ha gold. Yeah, and gold. placed them on the two ends of the atonement cover. He molded the cherubim on each end of the atonement cover, making it all... Of one piece of gold. The cherubim faced each other and looked down on the atonement cover with their wings spread above it. They protected it. Look, I know they were using other material like bronze and silver and stuff. So I wasn't entirely certain. But there is a lot of gold. So There's a yeah. lot of fucking gold in this. I want to know how um, statues of cherubim are protecting anything. Like, are they God coming to life? So? I don't know. Are they going to come to life? Is that I... what... Is that what we have in store? Maybe, that could be kind of cool. Maybe. I I don't know. I, I hope we learn more about that. That could be cool. Maybe they just like... I don't fucking know. <laughs> Where were you going? You just you just drifted off. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was thinking maybe with all like the anointing oils and all the crap that they put on it. Maybe like if you, if you start like messing with the cherubims on there, they're like, they alert the cherubims and they're like, okay, cherubims, unite. Time to go get those fuckers up the ark because they're trying to get in. Oh my god, that I'm glad you didn't say that, and I wish you hadn't said it the second time. Yeah, stupid. Sorry. Then Bezalel made the table of acacia wood, thirty six inches long, eighteen inches wide, and twenty seven inches high. He overlaid it with pure gold and ran a gold molding around the edge. He decorated it with a three inch border all around, and he ran a gold molding all along the border then he cast four gold rings for the table and attached them at the four corners next to the four legs the rings were attached near the border to hold the poles that were used to carry the table hmm. he made these poles from acacia wood and overlaid them with gold then he made special containers of pure oh my god gold for the table bowls ladles jars and pitchers to be used in pouring out liquid offerings then Bezalel made the lampstand of pure hammered gold. He, hey, we just out of curiosity though, where the hell is uh, what was the other guy's name? A holy ab. The guy, yeah, a holy ab. Why is of Bezalel Dan. doing everything? Maybe oh, maybe maybe a holy ab did like the drapes and stuff. Yeah, he could be like, he's like the a linens, seaman, like uh, whatever you call him. He said seaman. Well, you know what I mean, the seam seamster or something. Seam you know, seamster. Yeah, the sewy you know. guy. Sewy guy. And this is the buildy guy. Right. <laughs> He made the entire lampstand and its decorations of one piece. The base center 
stem lem- lamp cups, buds, and petals. Sorry, I had a hard time with that. Yeah. The lamp stand had six branches going out from the center stem, three on each side. Each of the six branches had three lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. I bet that was really pretty. I'm sure it was. Because he was um, a master craftsman. Yeah, yeah. But, oh, okay, let me let me ask. I mean, I'm just saying, like, we're talking about master craftsmen back in, like, before the birth of Christ, right? Yeah. So, like, what kind of tools did they work with and exactly how mastery craftsmanshipy were these things? I don't know, but... We'll never know. They could have just been a big sloppy art piece of shit. That's true. The bar was pretty low. I'm just saying. <laughs> The center stem of the lamp stand was crafted from four lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. There was an almond bud beneath each pair of branches where the six branches extended from the center stem, all made of one piece. The almond buds and branches were all of one piece with the center stem, and they were hammered from pure gold. I'm kind of done saying gold, though. No, that's your that's your place here. Gold, gold. He also made seven lamps for the lampstand, lamp snuffers, and trays, all of pure gold. The entire lampstand, along with its accessories, was made from 75 pounds of pure gold. Then Bezalel made the incense altar of acacia wood. It was 18 inches square and 36 inches high with horns at the center, or I'm sorry, at the corners, carved from the same piece of wood as the altar itself. He overlaid the top sides and horns of the altar with pure gold. And he ran a gold molding around the entire altar. He made two fucking gold rings and attached them on opposite sides of the altar below the gold molding to carry the gold carrying poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with Jesus gold. Then he made the sacred anointing oil and the fragrant incense using the techniques of a skilled incense maker. The end. That's golden. Bezalel, (laughs) he's so good at everything. I. I'm attracted to Bezalel. I I need a story. I I need a fucking story. I thought you were going to say, I need a cigarette. And I was like, what? I need... (laughs) I need a fucking story. I can't comment on this fucking bullshit. It's so... It's boring. Boring. It's almost as boring as so-and-so begot so-and-so begot so-and-so begot so-and-so. I think this is more goddamn boring. I mean, I don't think it's... I think it's as boring. It's different boring. I just... I. Sorry that we're boring. We might as well be reading Ikea instructions. That's my joke. I know. But it's true. It is true. Because it's that fucking boring. Well, maybe the next chapter picks up. Let's see what happens in Exodus chapter 38. All right. Okay, before I start this next chapter, Uh I just have to comment on something. What's that? So, after we finished the last chapter just now, yeah. we had to take like a 15 minute break because we knew that an <laughs> alarm was going to go off. Right. And that's kind of funny, but whatever. That's not the point. The point is that the entire time that we were on that break, you were so whiny. You were whining about how boring this is. And then you told me straight out, don't make me say gold anymore. Well, yeah, I don't, I can't think of funny things to say when I have to keep saying gold every five seconds. I just thought that whole thing was worth stating that you were going off about um, the Bible and the Ark and all the gold well, for it's 15 bu- straight you know what? minutes. Okay, all right, it's bullshit. This is so <laughs> fucking boring going over the same goddamn things over and over and over. Like, come on, I'm done with this story already. I know. Like, you know, I don't want to cover the Ark anymore. I know it's like 42 feet of this and six inches of that and fucking gold and goddamn gold and gold. And cherubims and carrying poles. Oh my god. And horns. Fucking horns. horns. I mean, just enough already. It's a fucking art. Great. They build it. Awesome. Move along. (laughs) I just thought that our listeners deserve to hear that you were a whiny fuck. Yeah, well, whatever. (laughs) Like, you're never a whiny fuck. Oh, I never claim not to be. (laughs) I'm definitely a whiny fuck. All right, let's get on with this episode, huh? All right. right. Exodus chapter 38. Next, Bezalel used acacia wood to construct the square altar of burnt offering. 
It was seven feet wide, seven feet long, and four feet high. He made horns for each of its four corners so that the horns horns and altar were all one piece. He overlaid the altar with bronze, not gold. Hey! Hey. Yes, this is exciting. We're on the bronze now. (laughs) (laughs) Then he made all the altar utensils of bronze. The ash buckets, shovels, basins, meat forks, and fire pens. Hey, just think, we haven't even got to the fibers yet, or the fabric yet. Oh my god, stop. So, like, we still got fabric to go. Linens. I'm very excited. Oh, and the the oils and shit. Oh my god, stop, just stop. so, so excited. Everybody's excited with me, right? Come on, (laughs) you're excited. Next, he made a bronze grating and installed it halfway down the side of the altar under the ledge. He cast four rings and attached them to the corners of the bronze grating to hold the carrying poles. Didn't we cover that the last time? I'm pretty sure. Or just sure the we other did. side? I don't know. I, I stopped keeping up. It's hard to care and read aloud boringness at the same time. I mean, my brain is turning into goddamn mush as we speak, so. I mean, maybe that's the purpose, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because if you, you simple. if you're malleable, you can, you know, believe in this shit, maybe. And if you just, like, so fucking bored. You're like, yeah, whatever. God, fucking awesome. God is great. God is good. Great. God made an ark of acacia wood. Fucking ark is amazing. I Jesus made a Christ. rhyme and you were like, I wasn't paying any goddamn attention because I was so okay, I'm gonna enthralled say it again. with what I was saying. So I know. you know, I'm gonna say it again. Yeah. Ready? Mm-hmm. God is great. God is good. He made an ark of acacia wood. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. <laughs> See? See? You should stop talking over me now. I, well, yeah. He made the poles from acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. He inserted the poles through the rings on the sides of the altar. The altar was hollow and was made from planks. Bezalel made the bronze wash bush. Wash, 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 wash. What the fuck was that? <laughs> wash muckler. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Let me try that again. I just have to stop here for a second. Just in case nobody knows this. We tend to do these episodes just like straight through one shot. Every once in a while something goes really wrong. We have to redo but generally, we just fuck up and move right along. Move right along. So, and just for, and you, the, just for the record. And then you, know? you tend to make fun of me. Well, I mean, that's what we do. Which is funny because you can't even fucking read out loud. So, I don't know why I you're can. making fun that's of me. I can. That's why you read. I know. I mean, I can read out loud, but it's really fucking boring and I don't have any inflections. So, yeah, there you go. And okay? you don't pause at periods and commas and... I mean... You're boring. I read just fine. I just don't read out loud That's very well. That's what I'm well. saying. You're reading out loud voices. Okay, I'm sorry. We're yeah, really distracted because we're so bored. Well, yeah. Fucking Acacia would. Bezalel made the bronze wash basin and its bronze stand from bronze mirrors donated. What's a bronze mirror? Donated by the women who served at the entrance of the tabernacle. That doesn't seem very effective, does it? Yeah, it's not very <laughs> like, reflective. Oh, look at that shiny metal that I can't see anything in. Right? Hmm. Yeah, what is a... Okay, whatever. It's reflecting light, but... Next section, the court of the tabernacle. The court of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now we're building a court. Okay. Like a tennis court? I don't know. Basketball court? I hope so. That'd be more fun. Then Bezalel made the courtyard. How do you make a courtyard? I thought a courtyard was like plants and stuff. I don't... I mean, I'm sure they're going to fucking tell us, so... Yeah, why did I ask? (laughs) Which was enclosed with curtains. Oh, that's see, this is where yep, the curtains. The this linens. Is, we're onto the fabrics now. Yeah. Made of finely woven linen. But did you notice that Bezalel is still doing this, and, and Aholiab is nowhere to we, be found? We yet. didn't. We read literally one sentence, and you've already decided well, who made it. You don't know. I don't know. It just seems like awfully, like they're they're discriminating against the tribe of Dan. So well, I mean, that's what it feels like. Maybe the tribe of Dan is a bunch of drunk asses. You don't know. Maybe. Okay, well, let me keep reading. Okay. Finely woven linen. On the south side, the curtains were 150 feet long. They were held up by 20 posts set securely in 20 bronze bases. He, so yeah, Bezalel. He hung the curtains with silver hooks and rings. He made a similar set of curtains for the north side. 150 feet of curtains held up by 20 posts set securely in bronze bases. He hung the curtains with silver hooks and rings. The curtains on the west end of the courtyard were 75 feet long, hung with silver hooks and rings, and supported by 10 posts set into 10 bases. Is everybody keeping up here? Not even a little bit. The east end, the front, was also 75 feet long. The courtyard entrance was on the east end, flanked by two curtains. 
east. It was east. on the east end. Okay. The curtain on the right side was 22 feet long and was supported by three posts set into three bases. Three. three. Okay, I got it. The curtain on the left side was also 22 feet long and was supported by three posts set into three bases. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on building this tomorrow. So both sides were the same. <laughs> and they couldn't just say each they side were, was blah, blah, blah. What the fucking same, yeah. Yeah. All the curtains used in the courtyard were made of, guess what, finely woven linen. Yeah. Yeah. I even know what colors, I think. They were like... Red and... Fi- weren't they like... Oh, shit. Violet. I don't remember. It, wasn't it like red, blue, and purple, basically? It seemed, yeah, it seems like yeah. that was about right. Yeah. Each post had a bronze base, and all the hooks and rings were silver. So we did gold, then we did bronze, and now we're at silver. Right. The tops of the posts of the courtyard were overlaid with silver, and the rings to hold up the curtains were made of silver. He made the curtain for the entrance to the courtyard of finely woven linen, and he decorated it with, here we go, beautiful embroidery in blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Oh, we were so close. Blue, purple, I mean, scarlet. scarlet's basically red, yeah. but you know, yeah. yeah. It was 30 feet long, and its height was 7 feet, just like the curtains of the courtyard walls. It was supported by four posts, each set securely in its own bronze base. The tops of the posts were overlaid with silver, and the hooks and rings were also made of silver. All the tent pegs used in the tabernacle and courtyard were made of bronze. Okay. Okay. I mean, that that's, you know, I, I have to say that this is, this is very important if you're um, writing a Bible, apparently. Yeah. And you need to know this stuff, because it's going to matter in, in the afterlife. You know, it's really funny, like, um, I, as a writer... Um, I'm encouraged often to to make um, a story Bible. And mm-hmm. you know what we don't include in our story Bibles? What? Any of this shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, that uh, kind of goes without saying because, like, I, I feel like an we, – we've talked about editors before, but I feel mm-hmm. like an editor will be like, okay, you need to lose this entire chapter, right? the last entire chapter, the one before that, and, like, the five before that. Because right, right. it's 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 much, and and even the one that you just described it the first time, you need to like cut it down. You yeah. need to shorten it. That needs like we can scrap about like ten pages here. Right. Okay. Right. The supervision of the work. This is an inventory of the materials used in building the tabernacle of the covenant. The Levites compiled the figures as Moses directed, and Ithamar, son of Aaron the priest, served as recorder. Bezalel of Uri, grandson of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made everything just as the Lord had commanded Moses. He was assisted by... Aholiab. Aholiab. There he is. Son of Ahithamah, of the tribe of Dan. A Damn. craftsman expert at engraving, designing, and embroidering oh. with blue, purple, and scarlet That's thread. That's why he didn't actually make the stuff. He just embroidered it and and um, engraved it. Yeah. So, like, he did all the fancy stuff. Yeah. But, but uh... Dude built Bezalel it. Bezalel, dude. Yeah. Built all the shit. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm embroidering with blue, purple, and scarlet thread on fine linen cloth. Okay. The metal of the sanctuary... The people brought special offerings of gold totaling 2,193 pounds. That's Damn. such a random number, though. It really is. And they got that down. Yeah. I mean, they got it exact. down. Exact. Exact. Right. As measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. Okay. <laughs> the weight. What, what the fuck is a sanctuary shekel? I thought shekel was a type of money. I did, too. So how does shekels measure stuff? This gold was used throughout the tabernacle. Hold on. You know how I told you I was going to mention we need to look stuff. We need to look up shekels. We really need to look up shekels. And you find out what the fuck a shekel is. Yeah. And how much it was worth then versus how much it's worth now. Right. The whole community of Israel gave 7,545 pounds of silver as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. Hmm. This silver came from the tax collected from each man registered in the census. Oh, here's some interesting information. Oh, so it wasn't given up by those that were willing. It was given up by everybody because they fucking collected it as a tax. At the census. And that definitely was not fucking voluntary. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like how they call slaves servants. Right. Yeah. It's the whole whitewashing of everything. (laughs) Right. The tax is one Becca, B-E-K-A. Okay. Which is half a shekel based on the sanctuary shekel. So is like maybe the sanctuary shekel is like a standard standard bearer form of this payment method that is weighted 
and therefore like a shekel has to be weighed to equal so many sanctuary shekels. Yeah, that sounds smart, but I, I don't, don't care. Right. The tax was collected from oh see tax mm -hmm. was collected from six thousand no, I'm sorry, six hundred and three thousand five hundred and fifty men who had reached their twentieth birthday. That went very fast from a donation Mm -hmm. To a tax. You remember how they were giving too much? Yeah, they were like, oh, we're like, receiving oh, too many receiving pieces too of wood. You mean your tax collectors were collecting too much is yeah. what you're saying now. Right. Like, right. you know, and they even changed it up just within this chapter because yeah. it started off as donation yeah. and then went to tax. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fucking liars. Yeah. The hundred bases for the frames of the sanctuary walls and for the posts supporting the inner curtain required 7,500 pounds of silver, about 75 pounds for each base. Jesus. That is ridiculous. And I'm sorry, but any God demanding this is mm. just totally power hungry and childish right. and stupid. And like totally, if you guys just want to donate one base to us, I'm good with just a mere 75 pounds of silver. I'll take a shekel. I'll take I mean, a shekel. Yeah, honestly. I mean shekels are good too, but I mean, I'm just saying, like one one base, that'd be good. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess. I'm just yeah. saying. The remaining forty five pounds of silver was used to make the hooks and rings and to overlay the tops of the posts. The people also brought as special offerings five thousand three hundred and ten pounds of bronze, which was used for casting the bases for the posts at the entrance to the tabernacle. And for the bronze altar with its bronze grating and all the altar utensils. Now, they said that that was an offering, a special offering. But that's essentially what they said Do about the other shit. you think by special offering they mean I took that shit and made it special? I mean, I think what they mean is that those people done fucked up and they're like, you need to get some extra shit and bring it up here. Yeah. I think it was still a goddamn tax, probably. Yeah. And yeah. if we looked into it more, I'm sure that's what we would find out because nothing's yeah. voluntary. They're fucking forcing these people. Yeah. I mean, they're essentially making them do this at the point of death, you know, yeah. like, and build who's this, not going to do it? Build this or get cast out, a.k.a. Right? die. Yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah. Bronze was also used to make the bases for the posts that supported the curtains around the courtyard, the bases for the curtain at the entrance of the courtyard, and all the tent pegs for the tabernacle and the courtyard, the end. Okay. I really hope we got a story next week. I mean, I could peek ahead, but I'm not no, going to. No, I'm not going to. No spoilers. No spoilers. No. you got to stick around and find out that shit. Yeah. I mean, we got to read this crap, so yeah. you, gotta you gotta guys can at least us. come with us. Yeah. So next week, we will be reading Exodus chapters 39 and 40. Oh, my God. We're going to finish up the... We're going to finish Exodus, Exodus next oh, time. See, now you guys got to come back because it's the end of Exodus next week. We'll have read two full books of the Bible. That's amazing. That is really amazing. That's yeah, more than I've ever read. In That's my entire sure. life of and, the Bible. Well, yeah. Not I mean, read like... After having read so much so far, mm -hmm. I don't think it was without cause that I haven't read it, but <laughs> you know I'm just yeah, saying. Like, so far it's like, eh, no big loss. Yeah. But still, I mean, there's like a hundred billion trillion other chapter or books of mm -hmm. the Bible. Yeah. So, you know, maybe it picks up. I don't think so. I don't think it does either. But, but hopefully our humor can carry people through this <laughs> and we can all suffer and... In unison. Well, I just want to be able to say, I did read the Bible, asshole. I know. That was the whole point of this from yeah. the beginning. Yeah. 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 For sure. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Husband. Wife. Can I say the things now? Yes. Okay. So you had a list of items that you wanted people to check out? Yeah, definitely. Um, make sure you check us out on Twitter. We are there under the handle sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Yeah, that's that's exactly where I'd have gone with that. Yep. Um, we also would love to get emails from you because we love hate mail, fan mail, the whole nine yards there. That email address is sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. And we are now on YouTube. And if you are listening to us on YouTube, you're going to be running a little bit behind what our schedule is for our podcast because you're going to be hearing stuff from two months before if you are caught up. You're in the past. You're in the past. So you should join us on our podcasting apps that are available. So like you can catch us on Apple 
Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify. I'm on um, Castbox. Yeah, my wife's special. She's on Castbox. I like Castbox. And then on any of the things that you're on, we always would love it if you would like and subscribe. That helps us out so so much. So yeah, do those things. Do those things, and we will see you guys next week. Sure, sure we will. It's on Thursdays. Yeah, that. Okay, bye.